Grace and peace to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to St. Mary United Methodist Church. My name is John Hiller. I want to welcome everyone who is worshiping with us in person and online. Today we continue our sermon series, Overcoming Giants. We'll be looking at a story of an unexpected hero who overcomes a giant. Tonight our youth group will be meeting here at the church at 530 and we have extended our youth group program to May. So we'll be going a little bit longer. We won't be meeting on Mother's Day, but we'll be meeting the other Sundays in May. Logos will meet Wednesday at 4.30 here at the church. It's time to start thinking about camp. If your child or youth is interested in going to one of our church camps, now is the time to sign up. We have church camp opportunities for children and youth of all ages. If you have any questions about that, contact the church office. Save the date for our Vacation Bible School, which will be June 13th through the 16th. For more information, be on the lookout in the newsletter or contact the church office. We're excited to announce that Pastor Michaela will be taking the position of director at the Cameron Campus Wesley Foundation starting this week. She'll be directing the college ministries and student ministries representing the United Methodist Church there on campus at Cameron. We're so excited for this opportunity for her. Taking on the position of children's director will be our own Liliana Shell. We're excited about the gift that she brings to this ministry and the energy and excitement that she has for it. And also, you'll see another familiar face. Mary Ann Hankins will begin as our receptionist in the mornings here at the church office. So if you see any of these folks, congratulate them on these new opportunities. We're excited about all of these changes in ministry here at St. Mary. And now, let us Okay, let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day, for this time to gather together in your presence. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here. Fill us with your love that we might overflow in worship of you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. We're so glad you're here with us. Uh, let's stand and worship together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless. In awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. 
This is a failing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. All that you've done for me, yeah, this is amazing grace. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to the Refuge at Centenary United Methodist Church. My name is John. We are so glad that you're here with us this day as we continue our series, Overcoming Giants. Today we'll be looking at the story of how a ragtag group of people overcame a giant and there's a surprise twist ending. So be on the edge of your seat for that one. Later in the service as well, we'll be receiving Holy Communion where Christ invites us to come to the table and dine with him. Everyone is welcome at Christ's table, where you can come and meet Jesus and share in the fellowship with one another. As we continue with our worship service, will you join me in our call to worship? Up, for this is the day the Lord has given your giant into your hand. The Lord is indeed going out before us. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, to the Lord I will sing. I will make melody to the Lord, the God of Israel. During our next song, we'll be collecting our offering. Our offering is one of the ways that we respond to God's love for us and the work that God is doing in us and one of the ways that we allow God to work through us. If you'd like to give online, you can go to lawtoncentenary.org. That we owe, you paid it. 
Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many blessings that you pour out upon us. We turn some of those back to you now. May they be used for the building of your kingdom in this place and around the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. the sum of every high and every low. Remind me once again just to What 
Holy God, who breathes life into us, who calls us your own, we gather here this day, surrounded by the worries of this world, our fears and frustrations, the giants that threaten to overcome us. We trust, O oh God, in your strength. We trust in your presence with us. Make yourself known to us. Reveal your ways to us. Open our eyes to see the world as you are creating it. Pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon your church and strengthen us to join you in the task of building your kingdom here on earth. of feeding the hungry, of caring for the sick, of eating with sinners, of standing with one another, standing beside those who feel alone. Oh God, we give you thanks that we are not alone, that you are working for good in the world, and that you surround us with others in this community. We pray for the world around us, God, the struggles seen and unseen. We pray for peace, especially peace in Ukraine. We pray for those who are suffering from illnesses and injury and ask that you would bring them healing. We rejoice, O oh God, in the good things that you are doing here in this place and elsewhere, of the lives that are changed, of the healing that is found, of the love that is shared. Whatever other burdens and joys we carry with us this day, we lay them at your feet, trusting that you hear us when we pray. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
the first is Judges 1, 4, 1 to 9. The, Israel, the Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. After Ehud died, so the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazer, the commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Heroseth Agoin. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for years. At the time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Labadoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Amenum, from Kedeth and Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take possession at Mount Tabor. Bring your ten thousand from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Caesarea, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the watering station with his chariots and his troops. And I will give him into your hand, Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go, but if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Never, nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. With and Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to say, Alex did a great job with that passage, didn't he? I warned him. There was lots of Old Testament words in that one, and he looked through it and said, I'll do it. So he took it on, and you did very well, Alex. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us. Speak to us now your words, that we might hear what you would have us to hear, and that we would do what you would have us to do. Amen. There are all kinds of genre in the Bible. There's poetry, there's epic tales, there's laws, there are letters, there are gospels. But there's one overlooked genre in the Bible that we read today from the book of Judges. It's the heist. That's right, the heist. Think of your favorite heist movie, Mission Impossible, Ocean's Eleven, Tower Heist. The Bible has a heist as well. It's the story of Deborah and Barak, our ocean's 12 tribes of Israel. Now, hear me out. You might be thinking heist. That is a modern invention of modern cinema, a movie that relies on a formulaic plot and the charisma of a big star and special effects and always ends with some obscure plot twist. That's right. This is exactly what I mean by a heist, and the story of Deborah and Barack is a heist. But first, we have to start out with a strong lead character, somebody who has a problem and a vision to overcome that problem. So we start with Deborah. Deborah has a problem. Israel has been occupied 
by King Jabin for 20 years. Jabin, the king of Canaan, and his lead general Sisera, and their chariots of iron, 900 chariots roaming around Israel, keeping people in line, oppressing people, stealing land, stealing people. It's bad news. It's a problem. And Deborah is ready to solve it. So we move on to the next part of every heist movie. Bum, 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 ba, da, da, bum, 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 ba, da, da. We have to assemble a team. A team. People of various skills and abilities that will help us accomplish the heist. You know, the muscle, the weapons experts, the transportation, the communications, the tech geeky guy who's always back there clicking on the computers where everybody else is doing the heist. We've got to assemble that team together to carry out the plan. And so Deborah starts assembling the team. But also, as you know, in the heist movie, there's always that one character who's too old for this stuff. Who says, I'm out of the game, I have been out of the game for too long, I'm not doing it. I'm retired, I'm not doing it, you can't make me go back. And there's some bargaining that has to go on. A deal has to be struck, or they have to be convinced to come along for the heist. In our story, that's Barak, the general. Deborah summons Barak and says, Hey, God has commanded us to go and destroy Sisera and his army. But Barak is hesitant. I'm not going alone. If we're going to do this, you're coming with me. And so they cut a deal. Deborah says, Yeah. I'll go with you, but just know this, that your cut of the glory is going to go to a woman. So we've assembled our team. Barak gets a thousand men from the tribes of Nephtali and Zebulon. They get their team assembled, and they're ready to go. That brings us to the next part of the movie. The plan. They have to come up with a plan, how they're going to carry out the heist. In the movie, it's how they're going to get into the building, bypass all of the security, get to the goods, and get out safely. The plan. So here's the plan. Barak and his men and Deborah will go up Mount Tabor, and they'll wait there. And God will bring Sisera and all of the chariots down in the valley below, down in the wadi, the dry creek bed below. And when they get down below the mountain where Barak and all of the men are waiting, they'll use the high ground and mm, destroy them. All right, the plan is to use a mountain, go down the mountain, and defeat the army. Ingenious plan. Ingenious plan. Nothing can go wrong because the chariots, they can't really get going uphill. The chariots, you know, they're fast, but they can't get going uphill. And if you're coming downhill, you've got all of the power behind you. So we have a team. Barak and these men of Zebulon and Naphtali. We have the plan, go up the mountain. And then when Sisera gets down below the mountain, boom, we're just about to carry out the heist to take out Sisera, to free Israel from all of these years of oppression and hardship and trouble. But then there's that weird kind of aside, an interruption of the plot. In the movie, it might be one of the people about to carry out the plot, swearing that he sees somebody from his past standing across the street. Or it might be an unmarked van pulling into a parking space across the way. Or maybe just one shot of a random helicopter flying overhead. Something that kind of distracts us for a moment right before they rush in to carry out the plan. Well, in our story today, just before the battle begins, the narrator tells us that living nearby was a man in a tent. That he was a Kenite. And he was living there. The Kenites were kind of neutral in between Israel and Canaan. And it says that this Kenite was friendly with Canaan. And he was living there in a tent, kind of alongside the battle. Guy in a tent. Okay? 
back, back to the action. They come down the mountain, and as Barak and his men are coming down the mountain, God throws all of the people of Sisera and his army into chaos. And they're going each in every way. They have no idea what to do. And the Israelites wipe every last one of them out. They destroy them completely, chariots and all. It is an utter victory. The plan has come to fruition. It's been a perfect plan, and they carried it out perfectly. But wait! Sisera got away. Oh no, the plan failed. A wrinkle in the plot, Sisera got away. The whole point was to capture and kill Sisera, but he's escaped. Sisera flees the battle. If only we could have seen this coming. If only, I don't know, if Deborah had said something about Barak wasn't going to defeat Sisera by himself. Oh wait, she did. We should have seen this coming. Sisera gets off of his chariot in the middle of the battle and just takes off running away. And he finds this tent near the battlefield. And he knows that the people inside are Kenites. They must be friendly to him. So he goes to the tent and he's greeted by a woman named Jael. Jael welcomes Sisera into the tent. Sisera is worn out and exhausted from the battle and from running away. So he comes into the tent and Jael gives him a blanket. He lies down. He asks for a drink of water. She gives him a glass of warm milk and then tucks him into bed and he's starting to fall asleep. But then we see the shadow a large object move over Sisera's head. He kind of mumbles to himself in his sleep. And then all of a sudden, wham! Jael drives a tent peg clean through his head and into the ground. And just about that time, Barak finally catches up to where Sisera has fled from comes to the outside of the tent where Jael greets him and says, the one you're looking for is in here. Barak goes in to see Sisera head nailed to the floor, lying there dead. They did it. They carried out the heist. They took out Sisera, but it was unexpected. How they did it kind of came out of nowhere. And so we come to the part of every heist movie where they flip the script. The big reveal, the explanation of what really happened. The Bible tells us, so on that day, God subdued Jabin and the Israelites crushed them. The Bible tells us that it was God the whole time. And as simple as that one sentence is in the Bible, if you hear that, you think back to the story. And all the ways that God was at work in the background and in the foreground. How God had raised up Deborah to be the right judge at the right time. How God had called Deborah and said, Deborah, you need to bring in Barak so that he can gather up an army. And remember that plan to go up the mountain and wait for Sisera? That plan came from God, too. God is explaining that God has been there the whole time, working to defeat Sisera and the Canaanites, working with Deborah and with Barak. But there's still that one wrinkle, Jael. Where did she come from? What does she have to do with this story? If I just imagine the end of the movie, Barack and Deborah are sitting in God's office across the desk from God, and God is sitting there explaining how God has been there the whole time, how that was me who told you to bring in Barack, that was me who gave you the plan to go up the mountain and destroy them. I can just imagine Deborah saying, yeah, yeah, I get that, that you were there and that you were helping us Israelites. 
but why did you use a foreign woman? Why did you use Jael? And Barak goes, yeah, and why did you use a tent peg? And God puts God's hands behind his head, looks to the side and says, because I always did like to raise the stakes. This story shows us how when we face giants, God is there in unexpected ways, in mysterious ways. When there are problems that seem too big for us to face on our own, God doesn't want us to go it alone. That God surrounds us with people that we need to get through the situation. That when Israel cried out for help, God heard their prayers and lifted up Deborah to be the judge and the leader, to give them inspiration and hope, to remind them that God is with them. That God lifted up Barak, the man with the military skills and the people skills necessary to gather up an army, and that God uses unexpected people, too, in our lives, like Jael, the foreign woman who came in out of nowhere and unexpectedly defeated the giant. Whatever you are facing in your life, whatever giant is standing over you, God calls us to trust in God's plan. To trust that God is there quietly pulling the strings and putting the people that we need around us to support us and to help us get through the situation. That God does not leave us abandoned or alone. And that God comes from those unexpected places. Today we'll gather around the communion table around Jesus' table, where we are always reminded that we are not alone. That when we come to this table, we eat with Jesus Christ himself and we eat with one another. That we share in fellowship and in this community. We're reminded that the struggles we face, we do not face alone. And we're filled with the grace of God that we experience from the bread and the cup. Grace that gives us strength to go out and overcome our giants. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ invites us to come to this table. Christ invites everyone who seeks to live in peace with God and with one another. And therefore, we come with confidence, knowing that we are loved children of God. We come also with the confidence to confess our sins, knowing that we will find forgiveness and mercy. Will you join me in this prayer of confession? God of mercy, you have called us to love with our whole hearts, but we fall short. We have disobeyed your commands and turned our backs on our neighbors in need. Forgive us, we pray, and set us free by your grace. Amen. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. As forgiven and loved children of God, in a moment I'll invite you to share signs of the peace of Christ with one another. That just means we're recognizing that we are forgiven by God and that we can forgive one another The traditional way of sharing the peace is shaking a hand and saying, peace be with you. But whatever way you want to share Christ's peace with your neighbors during this time, you're free to do so. Also, as you're up and moving around, I invite you to light a prayer candle. When we see all of our prayers collected together in these candles around the one central candle, we're reminded that we don't pray alone. That God hears all of our prayers and might be even using you to answer someone else's prayer. Let us continue with our worship and share signs of the peace of Christ.
Will you join me now in the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When our love failed and we turned away from you, your love remained steadfast. You raised up judges to lead your people, to guide them back to your truth. Even when they turned away and fell into the hands of their enemies, you were there for them to support them and to call them back to you. And so, with all the people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind, release to the captives, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus fed the hungry, healed the sick, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and he shared it with his disciples. And he said, take, eat from this all of you. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, shared it with his disciples and said, take, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts through Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. It's through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, will you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread which we break for the sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Christ has prepared this table for you. Come and dine with him today. Standing in the fire 
see your light is breaking through. Your dark night will not overtake me. I am pressing into you. Lord, you fight my every battle. Holy God, we give you thanks for this mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we might go in the world and the strengths of your service and give ourselves to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and let us continue and respond to this message, to this, this gift that Christ has given us. We give you our hearts today, Lord. of life you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken we sing grace
the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, and all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing, great. Deborah, someone God has given a vision of hope to. Maybe you're a Barak, somebody who God will use to bring that vision to earth. Maybe you're a jail, someone who will help out in unexpected ways. Whatever God is calling you to be, however God is asking you to participate in the heist, when God comes calling to you, may you say, I'm in. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go now in peace. Amen. Yeah.